afternoon. It's good to see you again. Let's pick up on Philippians chapter 1, beginning of verse 12. I want you to know, brothers, that what has happened to me has really served to advance the gospel, so that it has become known throughout the whole imperial guard and to all the rest that my imprisonment is for Christ. And most of the brothers, having become confident in the Lord by my imprisonment, are much more bold and bold to speak the word without fear. Some indeed preach Christ from envy and rivalry, but others from goodwill. The latter do it out of love, knowing that I am put here for the defense of the gospel. The former proclaim Christ out of selfish ambition, not sincerely, but thinking to afflict me in my imprisonment. What then? Only that in every way, whether in pretense or in truth, Christ is proclaimed, and in that I rejoice. The grass withers and the flower fades, but the word of our Lord endures forever. Amen, amen. In this passage, Paul is sending some encouragement to the church at Philippi, letting them know that he sees God's providential and sovereign hand even in his imprisonment. That while he's there, the gospel is still moving and going through and uh, the guards are being saved and, and, and the gospel is being proclaimed. He's sharing with them that not just in the prison uh, area, but elsewhere, people are, are being encouraged by Paul's boldness in preaching the gospel. Some are doing so uh, out of goodwill because they want to see the gospel propagated, and others are using Paul, they're exploiting the situation and, and using Paul to uh, as a motivation or, or to, to um, say, you know, we're better than, than he is, uh, but they're still preaching the gospel. And, and that's what's curious at Paul at the end in verse 18, Paul, you know, Paul raises a question, well, what then? If some are preaching out of selfish ambition and some are preaching rightly, what, what does that mean? Well, he says, in only, only that in every way, whether in pretense or in truth, Christ is proclaimed, and in that I rejoice. Even the worst of preachers can be used by God. Even the worst teachers can be used by God. And Paul is saying, as long as Christ is being proclaimed, I need to rejoice in that. And we do too. Even in this day when we're sitting at home and wrestling with this, we uh, hear, a, hear a lot and can see a lot via video, via TV and in the internet. Uh, we need to praise God that God's name is getting out and that Christ is being proclaimed. And that we can rejoice that uh, this should embolden us, give us opportunities too. People are asking questions. They're wanting to know about Christ. Use this as an opportunity to share the love of Christ with them and to tell them the truths about Christ. Let's uh, read our next uh, devotion from uh, uh, the Valley of Vision. This is entitled The Divine Will. O oh Lord, I hang on thee. I see, believe, live. When thy will, not mine, is done. I can plead nothing in myself in regard of any worthiness and grace, in regard of thy providence and promises, but only thy good pleasure. If thy mercy make me poor and vile, blessed be thou. Prayers arising from my needs are preparations for future mercies. Help me to honor thee by believing before I feel, for great is the sin if I make feeling a, a cause of faith. Show me what sins hide thee from me and eclipse thy love. Help me to humble myself for past evils, to be resolved to walk with more care. For if I do not walk holily before thee, how can I be assured of my salvation? It is the meek and humble who are shown thy covenant. Know thy will, are pardoned and healed, who by faith depend and rest upon grace, who are sanctified and quickened, who evidence thy love. Help me to pray in faith, and so find thy will, by leaning hard on thy rich free mercy, by believing thou wilt give what thou hast promised. Strengthen me to pray with the conviction that whatever I receive is thy gift, so that I may pray until prayer be granted. Teach me to believe that all degrees of mercy arise from several degrees of prayer, that when faith is begun, it is imperfect and must grow as chapped ground opens wider and wider until the rain comes. So shall I wait thy will, pray for it to be done, and by thy grace become fully obedient. Let's pray. 
Father, we thank you that we can come before you today and lift our hearts to you. We pray for all of our friends and family in need. Uh, I pray for the Townsends, uh, uh, for Dylan and Katie, that you would be with them, provide for them, protect them. Uh, protect Dylan while he's at work on base and, and Katie and uh, in all that she has to do at home. I pray, Father, that you'd help her with her studies. Father, we pray that you would be with the Heralds that you'd put your hand upon them and that you would just protect them at this time from from this uh, virus. Uh, pray that Ms. Dot would not be affected by it in the least uh, and that she would be getting stronger each day. We lift up the Bonnies to you also and pray that you would be with Lisa and Barbara and Robin. I pray that you'd bring healing to them, that you'd continue to uh, encourage Lisa with the progress that she's seeing in her rehab. Uh, and that you'd take away the pain and discomfort that Barbara's feeling in her back, that you'd give them uh, grace and mercy and patience, and that they would know your comfort with them. Father, thank you for uh, our church family. I pray that you would be with each and every one of them, that you would encourage them and strengthen them. And Lord, that you would open up your word to us these days, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Thank you. Uh, for being with us today and I look forward to seeing you tomorrow.